another one, Simone Bart here, or you can call me Silly. Well, I reviewed all of Don Bluth's theatrical movies and his one TV special that now I'm going to review his penultimate film that is his first and only direct-to-video feature. And this also happens to be his first sequel, or prequel slash spin-off, to a previous movie he did with his co-director, Gary Goldman. And this movie is called Bartok the Magnificent. The movie is a spin-off slash prequel to Anastasia, in which the Bat Bartok was a traveling performer calling himself as Bartok the Magnificent, claiming to be strong and have defeated many creatures, including a bear who happens to be his performing friend and act named Zozi. And while performing in Moscow, Bartok is given a royal ring from Prince Ivan Romanov, who was passing by and enjoyed the show. Yet Ivan's royal regent, Lamoa, isn't happy with Ivan's behavior and wants him to rule as the next czar, though Ivan says he'll do whatever he wants when he's the next czar. But one night, the prince is kidnapped by the witch Baba Yaga, and Lamoa orders someone to rescue him. The people of Moscow want Bartok to find the prince, and after some convincing and motivation, Bartok agrees. So he and Zozi head to the Iron Forest to Baba Yaga's house, where Baba Yaga gives Bartok three tasks to retrieve three items. Pilaf, a pink creature stuck on a boulder, the crown of Obli, who is a giant fire blacksmith, and a magic fetter floating high in the sky. And all in exchange shall show Bartok where the prince is. Now, unlike Anastasia, this film takes a more comedic approach, considering that the comic relief takes center stage which has been done years later with Disney and Pixar's comic relief characters. But unlike those films where the main characters become the supporting characters, this film only has one character from the previous movie, Bartok. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, since the movie is good in what it presents. Well, for the most part, that is. I mean, there aren't any bad moments throughout the film, but there are occasions that do take me out of it and I have concerns with. One big issue is the animation in very small parts, where it would either hold a frame for a second or a quarter of a second, some crowd animation isn't fully finished, and very rarely would a moment have a couple of frames missing. I will give it the excuse for it being a direct-to-video movie, but it is pretty noticeable and hard to pass up. Other small instances are when the movie jumps from scene to scene without showing or explaining how and why it happened. For example, when Bartok goes to retrieve Pilaf, who's stuck on a boulder, which doesn't look like a boulder, and brings her back to Baba Yaga, the film cuts from Bartok trying to get Pilaf off the boulder to the skull guarding Baba Yaga's hut, with Pilaf still on the boulder. But she then detaches herself from it when they arrive, so why didn't she do it before? Maybe by being away from the snowy quarry, Pilaf manages to get off the icy patch she was stuck to, but I'm not quite sure yet. Though I don't mind everything else that goes on, and some of it is quite interesting. Like some bits of Anastasia are cleverly woven into this movie. Prince Ivan's design is based off of Dimitri as a boy. Zozi's voiced by the same actor who did Lad. Baba Yaga's voiced by the same actress who did Anya's caretaker at the orphanage. And is it me, or does this monk look like a silly take of Rasputin? Because if it is, I'd like to know how he became this and Bartok joined him. The way Baba Yaga's done here, even for being my introduction, is quite good and handled much better than how the Hellboy reboot portrayed her. And according to Russian folklore, Baba Yaga is a witch who takes and eats children who come to her hut. Her hut has chicken legs to move about, and she rides in a flying pestle and molter, or occasionally a broom. Yet in this film, she's more of a kind witch that never takes children that she likes to live alone. Granted, she's also stubborn, but it's nothing too mean, and she does mean well. Yet with Baba Yaga being the only Russian folklore in this film, I thought some of the other things like Pilaf, Obli, and the Feather are also part of some Russian folklore, but I couldn't find them out so maybe they're made for this film. The songs are good too, somewhat catchy at times, and they're done by the same songwriters of the first film, Lynn Ahrens and Steve Flattery, who also wrote songs for Susical the Musical. There's only five in this film, but each one has a nice tune, fine lyrics, good animation, and sometimes odd, yet silly moments. And the actors voicing the characters did a pretty fine job too. Hank Azaria voices Bartok. Kelsey Grammer voices Zozi. Catherine O'Hara voices Lamilla. Jennifer Tilly voices Pilaf. Andrea Martin voices Baba Yaga. Tim Curry voices the Skull. Philip Van Dyke voices Prince Ivan Romanoff. French Stewart voices Obli. Diedrich Bader voices Vol. And Danny Mann voices Head Cossack. As a whole, this movie is more of a comedic spin-off to Anastasia, but it's quite fun. The characters are good, the story is nice, the songs are alright, and the animation is quite good, even for a direct-to-video movie. 
Directors Don Bluth and Gary Goldman had done an exceptional job of making a movie that's somewhat of a prequel to the big screen feature, which they never done before in terms of movies and they did it quite well for what they offer. At times it feels rushed and a couple of moments almost made me question the continuity and context of the film, yet I didn't bother or mind because I can see how some of it went and it's a comedy where sense doesn't matter. I wouldn't say it's as good as Anastasia, but with the amount of stuff happening it's borderline Pebble and the Penguin levels of entertaining. I may have an issue or two with it, but I can let them pass, and as the only directed video sequel from the legendary animator, it's not bad at all. So today, this movie we're getting a rating of three stars. So thank you for joining me. Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, support me on Patreon, and tune next time for a new video. Thank you.